this is my support group. Uh, <laughs> 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 I think I will not make like this presentation without these people, so I would like to everybody ask I would like to ask everybody to give applause for like the front row. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, hello everybody. Um, thank you for coming. Um, this is the first time speaking at the conference. I always wanted to speak at the conference. And this conference is even better because I can do speaking in flip-flops and shorts. Like, I don't need to wear any fancy costumes, so this is amazing. And, um, yeah, um, I'm, I came from Vilnius, Lithuania, and um, um, today I will try to talk about how to work with Israeli people. And uh, let's go. Um, so, a little bit about me. Um, wait. Maybe that's better. So I am uh, six years, like uh, this month, it will be six years in, I'm in Tel Aviv, in Tel Aviv, in uh, VIX. And uh, I need to see my notes. Um, okay, so be before uh, joining VIX, I spent some time in academia, uh, like for two, three years. And uh, thank you. And uh, after academia, I worked uh, in a local corporate IT company for four years. So like, I like I know corporate culture, right? And um, at my free time, I like swimming and running. And when I run, I see these like gorgeous animals which like to stare at me, so I feel important. And um, one of my favorite TV shows is Adventure Time. You will see later why. Um, okay, so Amanda Blan, what we have for today? Uh, I will try talk. I will try to talk about Israelis a little bit. <laughs> I will try not to get fired uh, like uh, doing that. And uh, as, my, as my flight is tomorrow, I hope to pass security like easy, but uh, we will see, especially after this talk, you know. Okay, um, disclaimer, I am like not researcher or anything, I'm just your humble like developer, right? And this is like my experience, my emotions and my observations. And like you as an audience can have different experiences and you can disagree with me and that's totally fine, right? And uh, the only thing I, which I'm trying to do here is just to reflect on my experiences and my observations and like wrap it in a little bit of humor if that would uh, be possible. Okay, let's dive in, Israeli people. Like, you know. <laughs> So you know a couple of Israeli people, right? <laughs> uh, okay, so let's get back in time, right? As I said, I'm in VIX for six years. And before VIX, I had no experience with Israeli people whatsoever. I have never been to Tel Aviv, Jerusalem, or whatever. And I had no like conversation with any of Israeli person, to my knowledge, right? And uh, so my experience or my knowledge of Israeli people comes from the TV because we watch TV, right? And come to think of it, it was news mostly. So what have I saw, in, what have I seen in the news is that Israelis wear cool hats and, <laughs> and uh, rock really nice beards, which I cannot grow any, so I'm jealous, obviously. And um, yeah, so they look cool, right? Um, they have this amazing uh, writing system, uh, and uh, yesterday I found out that you can even count using uh, the system, the system, if I'm correct, right? That's cool. Um, so, a little bit of side note, a side story. After I joined VIX, VIX offered us a Hebrew classes. So, like, you get to know the culture and stuff. So, I joined uh, the, the class, and there I learned some interesting words, like, please, thank you, excuse me. And in my whole six years Korean VIX, I've never heard my colleagues say any of these words. <laughs> so yeah, that's the language part. <laughs> what also I have learned uh, from TV is that uh, you, ha you guys have like mandatory military service. Uh, in Lithuania, we don't have this thing. I think this is very progressive view on the matter and we should learn from from that. 
Okay, so we established that Israel are pretty interesting people, pretty cool. So me, six years ago, is waiting to experience like, okay, I'm working for Israel company now. And uh, I cannot wait to experience cultural shock, right? Uh, all right, so my first month, so we have uh, onboarding, like you get to like through the Trello board, you get to GitHub, you like do, do some stuff. And I see an invite from my manager in my calendar to like have a little bit of chat, like get to know each other, right? Exciting. And, and he's late. <laughs> and uh, the first thing which I do in my Israeli company, in my, for my experience in Israeli company, is I train my waiting muscle. So coming from the culture, like in academia, in corporate environment, like being late is like very rude. Like you don't do that. Uh, so first cultural shocks hit me. And he joins eating. So, <laughs> uh, again, in like our culture, corporate environment, this is very rude. <laughs> you don't eat at the meetings. <laughs> it's like get together time, like, hey, what's up? Not solve like issues. And um, so, okay, I ignore that. I start my like, prepared talk, like I like to prepare whatsoever I'm trying to say. And while I started my talk, he just interrupted. Like, uh, can you please wait until I finish my great speech and so we can proceed? Uh, so no, no issue with like interrupting whatsoever. Okay, so I'm interrupted and like, it's so loud, like while he speaks, I'm like, where is, are you shouting at me right now? Or are you just saying like, I don't understand. And uh, while being like late to the meeting with full mouth of food, interrupted and being loud, his comment reaches like my feelings and I feel like really bad. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and uh, I also would like want to grab some food like to make me like feel better about myself. Uh, okay, so this is horrible experience. Uh, okay, so <laughs> with all this cultural shock, like still hitting me very hard, like what the fuck, sorry. It's okay for me to say, right? Um, yeah, sorry. Um, so I'm starting to think like, is it me? Like who, it's, is something is wrong with me? Like what? Or is it my manager? I'm like, of course it's not me. It's my manager, right? And uh, I slowly start to observe like this kind of pattern also from my other Israeli colleagues. And I'm like, okay, this is interesting. And the most important question which I ask myself, like with all of this happening, like how VIX is so successful? <laughs> like, <laughs> how, how it survives? <laughs> And especially like thinking about it, like VIX is not only Israeli, right? Company, it's global company already. Like we have offices like in nearly all of the continents, right? So how do we stick together? And uh, giving this task to myself, I started my journey. And another disclaimer, I am a not professional researcher, like especially cultural. I can code, like my code is not great but uh, I'm nearly not a uh, good uh, researcher anyway. I'm just a friendly software developer who tries to uh, ask uh, answer all the Slack messages. Um, all right, so let's address the first um, like, uh, group of issues. Is uh, why, Israelis, why my manager was late, why he interrupted, and why he was so loud. <laughs> and uh, the thing which I discovered uh, was like a little bit maybe uh, not emotional, but you can say it emotional. Like I think like this was because Israel is a survivor nation. Israelis really value life, right? And when you value, value something uh, that much, you want to get the most out of it, right? So you want to do, to do as much as possible. You want to squeeze as much as possible into the single day. And that, that is why Israelis, 
have so many, so many meetings and why it's important during those meetings to, to make their point across. This is why interrupting, this is why being loud, just not to waste any time. <laughs> this was not part of it. <laughs> um, and I want to focus on the important thing, which like hurt my feelings. Being late is okay, like I can wait, right? But the feeling part is really like stuck to me. And uh, again, I, lit I dig even deeper with that, and uh, I came up with two leading theories, uh, which like generalize the Israeli culture of by being direct. And uh, the first group of theory come from the Hebrew Bible. I will not bother to pronounce the name. I have not learned it. I'm um, sorry. And uh, the Hebrew Bible describes uh, one to one person, uh, which is. Uh, Abraham, right? Um, so the guy like discovered, decided that, okay, there is one God, right? So to, for now, like in our generation, it sounds like, yeah, whatever, man. Uh, but at that time, it was very common to have like 100 gods, right? And he just said, nah, I'm doing my thing. I will just do, do this one God thing, right? So he said no to the status quo basically and he did his own thing right so it describes Israelis a little bit um, there is, was uh, in the same Bible there was another guy who called Jacob he was the grandson of uh, Abraham so he shares some wife uh, there was a moment when he was traveling uh, back to Canaan to his brother Esau and uh, Traveling at that time was not taking a flight and like going anywhere, right, in, in, a, in a day. It usually took like a couple of days. And there was a moment when he um, was, uh, no, was tired, right? So he, he, he tried, tried uh, to like uh, make a camp and like relax, right? And uh, uh, during that relaxed time, like he was attacked by this mysterious figure with somebody called Angel or uh, God himself or Esau. Doesn't matter really, but he wrestled all night. So he traveled all day, and instead of like resting and sleeping, he wrestled all night. And he won, apparently. And uh, the, the thing at that time was that uh, you can ask for blessing for so these mysterious figures, and he asked one, and this mysterious figure blessed him as Israel. <laughs> so... <laughs> So you get the point, like the people call himself Israelis, they wrestle all night, right? And uh, actually the word Israel uh, is often interpreted as the one who struggles with God. So like very pumped, okay. Uh, okay, so the second thing, it's chutzpah. So you Israelis, you know what is chutzpah, right? Uh, however, for our non-Israeli people, what is chutzpah? I pulled out a dictionary definition. So. Uh, it's uh, behavior or a person's attitude which like shocks you like what the fuck but uh, it's so like confident you are forced to admire it right like <laughs> wow <laughs> okay so what is chutzpah let me give you some examples so you go to the desert you say oh I cannot grow anything here and you say no I have chutzpah and I invent uh, uh, like a dripping mechanism which like would allow me to grow, grow crops in the desert, which is amazing, right? And uh, you say no to all those people who say no, and you do your thing. What is chutzpah? Chutzpah is a bloody exoskeleton for the paralyzed people. There was a dude who is like a meat gopher. It's not the dude in the picture, he just his product. And uh, he, he, he was in a cra car crash, right? And the doctor said to him, like, you will never walk again in your life. You will be, like, a bad person forever. And he said, no, I have chutzpah. I will build the thing which allowed me to walk, and I will walk again. And he, like, built this thing, and he's walking fine. This is chutzpah. So to generalize, what is chutzpah? It's challenging the status quo. Like, there is no thing settled. Everything can be fixed. Everything can be made better. This is chutzpah. So you get the point, like people are really challenging all the time. So this is my two theories which support the being directness part. Okay, so we know the context. How do we win? 
right? And um, what, what, what should we do? So for me, the first thing which me helped a lot, it's don't take it personally. Um, <laughs> it, it's all the feeling part really, really quickly. Um, it's not about you, right? It's about that Jira ticket. It's not about your skill, it's about the situation which you need to fix. It's not about your feeling, it's about that incident in the war room which you should address immediately, right? So just don't take it personally, separate the issue from yourself and just work on the issue. And embrace the culture. The most important thing which uh, I would like to share with me, with share with me, nonsense, share with you is that uh, be open. Like this is amazing. This helped me a lot. So just take your point across without thinking that, oh, I will hurt the person's feelings. <laughs> uh, <laughs> because like what, whatever choice do you have, right? To lie? Like what? Um, there is one trick which like helped me a lot, like being open, is to create like human connections, like get to know people. It's much easier for me to tell, I don't know, gather your searcher shit, I'm sorry, rather than like taking, going to the stores and saying, I, I don't know this API, right? Because I don't know people there. So it's... Bridging the gap of connection makes the being open part is really, really easy. Okay. And um, I would also like to suggest the book which helped me also a lot. It's called Radical Candor by Kim Scott. Maybe you know uh, the author and maybe you know the book. I think this is amazing. So just read it. I will not spoil any, any details there. And uh, you also may ask like wh how this book is connected to Israelis at all. Uh, I would like to share one citation from the book. Uh, the author actually started thinking about the concept <laughs> while she worked for Israeli company. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much. I would like to thank uh, Smadar, who helped me for the presentation. I don't know if she's here. Aviva, who, who is making a talk uh, for in the other room, and all the external uh, uh, consultants. So thank you, people.